but welcome back. And we're going to touch on a topic that can be sensitive. In fact, it is, it is very sensitive, um, but it is history. Um, the, quest, the, the topic is, who are the Jews today? We will look at the Bible's definition, and we will look at the Jewish or definition according to Judaism. Okay? So, um, who are the Jews today? First of all, I want, I'm going to have my face on the screen here because I would like to read um, a word to my Jewish friends, Messianic and otherwise. That what I'm sharing, we're Bible focused, we're history focused. It's not personal, it's not anti-Semitic, facts are facts, and every one of us are all going through changes. Can we agree on that? Yeah. So, I just wanted to say that general citizenry, the masses, are controlled by the conquerors who write the history books and who perpetrate their story upon the masses. You and I are not responsible for what we are born into. What we are told is what we are likely to believe, especially when it's been told to us repeatedly. And everything around us, family traditions, religion, education, social structures, etc., confirms the history which we have been given. What I'm about to share is a different story because I will share a history of the Jewish people that you likely have never heard before. But remember, it's history. It's your history and it impacts everyone. I am speaking mostly to an audience of people who believe in the Hebrew Messiah from the tribe of Yehuda, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Gentiles and Jews alike. If you are a Jewish believer, you will likely experience your own identity crisis on a personal level as it relates to your ethnicity. But in addition to that, you will, by the grace of Yah, come to a place where you have to reckon with your religious practices your religious identity as it relates to your allegiance to certain aspects of Judaism and the Talmud. By Yah's grace, and I know my, my Jewish friends, we, we um, refer to um, Yahweh as Hashem, Adonai. It's a, a Judaic tradition not to speak the name of Yah because it's holy. But the Torah says, the Tanakh, the Bible says that we should call upon his name and it's salvation in his name. And I believe that's a lie of Hasetan to keep the people of God from calling upon his name. And hence we just say Hashem. So I do not mean it out of disrespect. I speak the word of God because I believe it is a biblical mandate to do so and salvation is in his name. So by Yah's grace as a Jewish believer in Yeshua, you'll make a determination as to how much you are sold out to the Torah, the Brit Hadashah and to Yahweh in light of this history of the Jewish people which you will be hearing today. If you choose Yahweh, then you will experience pain, sacrifice, and death to self. But in doing so, you will find life, and you will find life more abundantly. Finally, know that you are loved. And I pray that as I share this information, you will first recognize that I will be sharing facts within a limited time frame and at times I may come across harsher and hastier than I intend to be. And two, that being a lover of truth, the passion with which I share only reflect my disdain for lies. And I mean no personal offense whatsoever. Yahweh desires to do a deep work in each of us 
and I pray that you will hear his voice over my own spoken words. God is good. So let's just take it from the top. Look at the word Jew. There really is no such word as Jew in our scriptures. Jew is a, a word that was invented in the 18th century. It's a corruption of the 14th century Latin, Judaicus, found in St. Jerome's Vulgate edition. I will not try to pronounce those words because I think I just messed one up. But in my counting, I counted 29 changes so far. Facts are facts. Jewish historian, researcher, scholar Benjamin Friedman gave out that information. I, I counted. So I'm just going to say a couple of them and don't hold me by it. Jeyu, Jeyu, Eyu, 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 different spelling. I E U Y, I W E, I O W, I E W E, I E U E, I U E, I V E, I E J, I E W. And then, of course, we have the transition of J, and eventually we got J-E-W. So, when we have scriptures like John 1, 7 that says, After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, he went, and for he could no longer walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. That's the King James Version. The NASB and the NIV actually says, after these things, Jesus, walked, Jesus was walking in Galilee for he was unwilling to walk in Judea because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now what they did, they used the same word and they translated Judea, but still they still use the misinterpretation of the word Jew, which Jew is Judea. Jew is a Judean, a resident of Judea. It should read, he was unwilling to walk in Judea because the Judeans were seeking to kill him. When the word Jew was first introduced into the English language in the 18th century, its one and only implication, inference, and innuendo was Judean. However, during the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries, a well-organized and well-financed international pressure group created a so-called secondary meaning for the word Jew among the English-speaking people of the world. The word Jew bears no relation whatsoever to the 18th century original connotation of the word Jew. It is a misinterpretation. I quoted that. These are not my words. These are from Facts Are Facts by Benjamin Friedman. That's, I welcome you to look from page 15 to 21. You'll find that. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Judeans or, or Greeks. All are one in Christ Jesus. It's a biblical distortion. So, I don't know if you know this, but Jew just means, in modern times, one tribe, and that's the tribe of Judah. There are 12 tribes. Where are the other 11? Jews just mean one tribe. We got this from um, Judaism 101, and you're going to hear the word Yehuda, and there is the one of my favorite African maps, that whole section of the entire land mass of Africa. Y E H. The ancestor of one of the 12 tribes of Israel, which was named after him. Likewise, the word Judaism literally means Judaism, that is the religion of the Judahim. Thank you, Judaism 101, for that definition. So, Let's look at how Judaism defines a Jew. Who is a Jew? A Jew is a person whose mother was a Jew or any person who has gone through the formal 
process of Judaism, or of converting to the religion of Judaism. If your mother, if your mother was a Jew, well, we know biblically that the seed is in Abraham. The seed is in the man. It's the seed of Jacob. The lineage is in the seed. It's not in the mother. That's biblically, but that's a different definition. So we do have to understand that there is a, a, a definition, difference. That's, that's important. Okay. There are um, two um, kinds of main groups of Jews. Um, the first group is um, Sephardic. Um, I have a picture of them right here, and I hope to upload a, a picture of the Ashkenaz um, group. Um, Sephardic is from the um, Spain, Spain, Spanish diaspora, Oriental, Arab. Um, sometimes they are all grouped as Sephardic. Ashkenaz, Ashkenaz um, are perhaps the um, Jewish people that we're more familiar with in this country. Um, the beard, the, the hats, and perhaps the, the, the kippah. Um, they are Khazar, um, German, Russian from the Caucasus area, right where the Black Sea is, the, um, not Northeastern Europe, um, Poland, Russia, Lithuania, um, the ones we're familiar with. Okay. Know that the total Ashkenazi population is estimated at around um, 8 million. So the estimated world population as a whole is about 30 million, to, to let you know. So we're going to be looking uh, mostly at the Ashkenazi Jews, the one that we're more familiar with. Okay. Um, some of the definitions I'm going to go through, um, a, a Bible, tell you a Bible verse in Genesis 10, then we're going to go through how the Ashkenazi Jews are defined. You're going to know where they originate from. We had in our former studies, we talk about where the Hebrews originate from. We talk about the ethnicity of the Hebrews. So I'm sure you're curious as to, well, if the Hebrews are the real Jews, so to speak, um, who are the Jew, the people that we know are Jews? Where do they originate from? Well, we're going to go through Jewish resources to find where they tell you that they originate from. Fair enough? So, remember the word Ashkenaz and listen for Ashkenaz's name in our scriptures. As we read the lineage of the sons of Japheth, and remember Jeff, Japheth, um, the eldest son, not Ham, progenerator of the dark race, not the Negroes. The Negroes are Shem. Um, but Japhet, who the progenitor, progenitor of the European race. Um, so the Bible is giving his lineage. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japhet, and unto them were born the sons after the floods, after the flood. The sons of Japhet, then it goes down the line, to the son of sons of Gomer, and Ashkenaz is Gomer's son. So the scripture actually tells you the Ashkenaz origin. So now let's look at the resources that tells us about the Ashkenaz's origin. This is from the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1905. Some anthropologists are inclined to associate the racial origins of the Jews, not with Semites, not, not with Semites whose language they adopted, but with the Armenians, the Hittites of Mesopotamia, whose broad skulls and curved noses they appear to have inherited. That's the 1905 edition, volume X, page 284. 
Here we have the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925 edition, volume 5, page 14, that explains Adam, which is Esau, is in modern Jewry. Here we have um, former Chief Rabbi Stephen F. Wise, Chief of Rabbi of the United States, and he's quoted as saying, the return from Babylon, know your history, and the introduction of the Babylonian Talmud, know your history, marked the end of Hebrewism. Period. That's where in Judaism, the Bible stopped right there. And the beginning of Judaism. So Hebrewism stopped and we have a new entity, Judaism. Here we have um, the Jewish Almanac, 1980, page 3, it says, Jews admit that they are not the descendants of the ancient Israelites in their writings. Under the heading of a brief history of the term of Jews in the 1980 Jewish Almanac, it follows, it says, strictly speaking, it is incorrect to call an ancient Israelite a Jew or call a contemporary Jew an Israelite of Hebrew. That's why you have two separate groups of people. You have the Israelites or the Hebrews or the Hebrew Israelites and you have the Jews. Strictly speaking, it is incorrect to call an ancient Israelite a Jew or to call a contemporary Jew, Israelite or Hebrew. It's in the Jewish Almanac. Um, and here from um, H.G. E. Wells, his classic work on the outline of history, um, he concludes that the main part of Jewry never was in Judea and had never come out of Judea. If they, if they were never in Judea, and we'll go a little about their history, um, and we will see that um, at different periods of times, conquerors um, expelled the Judeans and Gentiles repopulated the land. We will go over that. So if they're not, the origins are not from Judea, where are they from? Well, They are from the Khazarian Empire, a part of history, 700 years rulership, an awesome, magnificent empire, 700 years of rulership, and we don't know that in history. It's kind of like the Moors, that why wouldn't you know that? Because it's not expedient for you to know that. So, um, in the first century, it was an Asiatic, mongoloid um, nation from Asia. Racially, today, they would be classified as Turco-Finns. They invaded Eastern Europe, and they created the Khazarian Empire. In the 7th century, their king, some sources refer to him as Bulan, some sources say Joseph. I have not reconciled that yet. Um, converted to Talmudism, as it was called at the time. It wasn't called Judaism at the time. It was, con it was called Talmudism. And he had to choose between um, the other three major religions. Um, Christianity was there also, as well as Islam. And um, they were barbaric people, many gods, very violent. Um, and he said, we need a different structure, and that's what he chose. So he called for... Um, Rabbis to come from Babylon, so right away that tells you a little about the rabbis, and um, he converted about 4,000 of his um, rulers. Um, so here's the map of Khazarian. The Khazarian language is Turkish, moving that along into Yiddish. Um, we have um, after the empire actually um, ceased, uh, many of the conquerors, they went to Spain. 
and um, many stayed, some stayed in Hungary, but many in Russia. And Russia actually conquered the territory. So when you think Ashkenaz, um, that's why you have many Russian Jews. And so the state of Israel welcomed the Russian Jews because they're of the same lineage. So 98% of Jews worldwide, even you live in like 42 different countries, um, they have immigrants or descendants of immigrants from Eastern Europe in common. They also have Yiddish in common. Here is a document that um, is a find called the Kazarian Letter. And um, you can see the, the, it's from a community in Kiev. Um, and you can see some of the lettering. Um, and you have um, even one of the signatures on it, which is Slavic. There are also, um, in this day of DNA, that confirms the European lineage of um, today's modern Jews. Um, here is a study um, entitled The Missing Link of Jewish European Ancestry. Um, and it considered two theories of where they came from, including the Khazarian hypothesis that says that the Jews are not biblical Israelites, but are from the Khazars. And um, it says, our findings support the analysis, supports the Khazarian hypothesis and portray the European Jewish genome as a mosaic of Near Eastern, Caucasus, European, and Semitic ancestry, thereby cons consolidating previous contradictory reports of Jewish ancestry. So, I have to read this for you because I know you're, it's not um, very much um, on the screen. Here we have um, another um, report, um, um, the Genetic Literacy Project, and this is the article I'm going to read in part from John Entine, and um, it's entitled Ashkenaz, a Jewish woman descended mostly from Italian converts. And that's what this new study asserts. A groundbreaking paper published in 2000 by Harry Oestrer, pardon me, O-S-T-R-E-R, -E a professor of genetics at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and University of Arizona Genesis Michael Hammer, showed that most modern Jews are descended on their male side from a core population of approximately 20,000 Jews who migrated from Italy over the first millennium and eventually settled in Eastern Europe. All Europeans, sorry, all European Jews seem connected on the order of fourth to fifth cousins. And then he said, overall they claim at least 80% of Ashkenazi Maternal ancestry comes from who comes from women indigenous to Europe, while only eight percent originated in the near, near East, and the rest is uncertain. So scientific um, DNA. 